Zeppelin's aim was to attempt to beat Frenchman Bruno Peyron's record. In May 2002, Peyron made sailing history when he sailed around the world in 64 days, 8 hours, 37 minutes and 20 seconds, the fastest circumnavigation time ever recorded. Ellen and her King Fisher II crew were not alone in their record-breaking quest. French skipper Olivier de Cassorson had already set off on his trimaran Geronimo. However, Ellen and her crew were confident that Kingfisher II would rise to the challenge. But after launching Kingfisher II, things did not go as planned. The 26-year-old and her 13-man crew were forced to make an unscheduled stop after their catamaran suffered damage to her mainsail and mast. After three weeks at sea, Ellen and her crew were neck and neck with the present record set by the Frenchman. But during one night she had a serious scare when her boat hit a submerged object at full speed. Although the damage was not as serious as first feared, it still concerned the skipper. Despite the worries, Ellen's fighting spirit kept them going. Kingfisher 2's position put them 31 hours and 26 minutes behind the pace set by Orange, the craft that Frenchman Bruno Peyron sailed to set the current record. With time running out, Ellen battled on, but she soon realized it was no use going on. With the Kingfisher 2 dismastered and a substitute using the catamaran's boom erected, progress was too slow. She sailed into Fremantle in Western Australia almost a fortnight after losing the mast. Of the dozen attempts that have been made on the Jules Verne record, eight have ended in failure, so the skipper always knew the odds were against her. Ellen had rarely slept or left the navigation station during the 24 days at sea, and when gloom could have swamped the crew after the failure, the opposite occurred, with plenty of high spirits. Ellen had never previously skippered a boat as big as the giant catamaran, nor led such a large and experienced crew. Even though the journey ended in disappointment, it wasn't long before Ellen was planning her next adventure. But first there was some well-earned R&R in store for the tiny sailor with the big heart. Kenya's Win Catherine Nedareba, winner of the Chicago and Boston Marathons, is a talented athlete with a strict training schedule. She begins her day at 6 o'clock in the morning, stretching, working out and running laps at the National Stadium. She thrives on the exercise, pushing herself to the limit, never thinking to miss a training session. Self-discipline is the key to this athlete's success, with a belief that all the hard work will gain rewards. After the morning sessions, when Catherine returns home to prepare breakfast for her family, her husband Anthony, an up-and-coming marathon runner himself, is also her training partner and is extremely proud of his wife's achievements. When Win Catherine's goal to be the first woman to go under 2 hours 20 minutes was achieved by another runner, her husband was by her side, encouraging her to go one better. And that she did, breaking the world record. After running the world's fastest marathon time in the Chicago Marathon, Catherine's recognition increased. This photograph is just one of the many mementos she has on display in her living room, along with trophies for her numerous athletic victories. When she returned home from her record-breaking run, Kenyan President Moy presented her with a Distinguished Service Medal. When Win Catherine isn't running, she works in administration at the men's prison in Nairobi West. She is in charge of the staff, organizing filing and dispatching messages. The Kenya Prison Service is famous for employing and training world-class athletes. They also employ three other champions, Susan Chepkemi, the world's fastest half-marathon runner, Ruth Kutel, a top three finisher in the Paris Marathon, and Edith Masai, winner of the Grand Prix race in Oslo. The four, known as the Golden Girls, train together on this dusty race course in the Lengata Forest near Nairobi. Guiding them through their paces is Kenya Prisons coach Elizabeth Olava, whose winning formula is to train the athletes strictly to a program, never deviating from the plan. She feels that it helps strengthen the mind as well as the body. Like when Catherine, she agrees that self-discipline and hard work allows them to get the most out of themselves. It is this strict discipline that has helped win Catherine to win the Boston Marathon twice. It is quite an achievement, as she is the only woman to have done so. But like most athletes, it hasn't all been success. When competing at the qualification trials for the World Long Distance Championships in Edmonton, Canada, she finished a disappointing fourth. Despite that setback, when Catherine's spirits have remained high, she has set her sights on the bigger picture, the 2004 Athens Olympic Games. 
when Catherine is an incredibly strong athlete who takes charge of her life and often urges other women to do the same. She doesn't sit back and hope that things will be done for her, instead she tackles life head on. She takes the initiative to dominate the world of athletics, just as her Kenyan male counterparts have done previously. And she has succeeded. The golf course at Brobalster near Stockholm, Sweden has a pretty impressive patron and the members can't stop talking about her. Annika Sorenstam is blonde and blue-eyed, extremely talented and willing to mix it with the boys. Coming from a sporting family, Annika made her golfing debut in 1982. Between herself, her sister Charlotte and her mother Ganilla, they have made many tournaments their own. Annika has an amazing talent. In 1995, at the age of 25, she had her first LPGA career victory when she became a Rolex first-time winner at the US Women's Open. She also won an Athlete of the Year in Sweden, the country's most prestigious sports award. With her name constantly on the leaderboards, it wasn't long before the world started to notice the long-hitting Swede. With a reputation as having nerves of steel, she continued to impress, defending her title at the 1996 US Women's Open. That same year, she surpassed the million dollar mark in career earnings. Annika is now a household name and a role model for young girls throughout the world. Merchandise for the star golfer is big business and much in demand. But that comes with winning. 1999 saw LPGA history when she fired an 11 under during the first round of the Sara Lee Classic, as well as her first career hole in one. As for prize money, her career earnings skyrocketed, crossing the $4 million mark. In the first five years of her career, Annika won more LPGA tournaments than any other tour player. There was no keeping Annika down. In 2001, she recorded eight wins, six second places, and a total of 20 top 10 finishes. She was awarded her fourth career Rolex Player of the Year award, and also set new records in earnings, crossing the $2 million mark in a single season. In the Lincoln Financial Group battle at Bighorn, Annika teamed with Tiger Woods to defeat Kari Webb and David Juval, marking the LPGA's first ever appearance on US primetime television. Going where others have feared to tread, Annika accepted in 2003 an invitation to play in the Colonial at Fort Worth, Texas, becoming the first woman in 58 years to compete in a PGA Tour event. The last female to play in a PGA event was the legendary Babe Zaharias at the 1945 Los Angeles Open. While her entry had brought criticism from some male players, she had an on-course female fan club, many sporting Go Anna badges. So whether she's breaking records or hitting off with the men, no one can deny the super talent of Annika Sorenstam. Smart, tough and talented British athlete Paula Radcliffe has plenty going for her. She is articulate and outspoken and just happens to be a damn good runner, making her the queen of British track and field. With a first-class honours degree in European studies and fluency in French and German, Paula is both smart in her lobbying techniques and brave enough to take on the might of athletics officialdom. Not scared to make her views known, Paula came to international prominence when she sat in the stands at the Edmonton World Championships, holding up a sign saying EPO cheats out. She was protesting over the inclusion of an athlete who had escaped a two-year ban for testing positive to a banned drug. The talented runner has also inherited some handy genes, as she is the great-niece of Charlotte Radcliffe, a 1920 Olympic silver medalist in swimming, and the daughter of marathon runner Peter Radcliffe. With ambitions in sport politics, particularly in furthering the cause of women in sport, an International Olympic Committee membership is not out of the question. Known as having the style of a nodding donkey, Paula looks like she is in pain, and probably is. Her eyes roll back and her head jerks as she appears to fight for breath, but looks can be deceiving. Paula, Britain's World Women's Marathon record holder, is as tough as they come. The winner of a BBC Sports Personality of the Year, Paula is inundated with offers to run in marathons, but the London Marathon is her pet favourite. She claims the internationally acclaimed event is the most important competition on her calendar. After winning and smashing the women's record in 2002 in London, she went on to become the fastest female marathon runner of all time in Chicago, finishing more than two minutes under world record time. 
With long distance Olympic gold medals in her sights, Paula is keeping fit and healthy. But things could have been worse when she was lucky to escape serious injury when a little girl on a bicycle ran into the world champion while she was on a training run in New Mexico. Despite grazing her knees and back, Paula's rigorous training regime continued. While the London Marathon is a prestigious title, attracting the world's best athletes, thousands of amateurs also take part, many raising money for charities on the way. And Paula gets in and does her bit too, raising awareness and cash for charities, helping the homeless and asthma sufferers. She says marathon running is a fun way for everyone to achieve a physical and mental goal. Paula won the 2003 London Marathon in style. In an astonishing 2 hours, 15 minutes, 25 seconds, she broke her own world record by a massive 1 minute, 53 seconds. With the event allowing male Kenyan pacemakers, Paula was able to use her strength and stamina to excel. Style or no style, Paula has what it takes to be the best in the world. Kathy Freeman won the hearts of a nation when she won gold at the 2000 Sydney Olympics. With the pressure of her country's expectations felt, the girl from a small town in Australia ran her heart out and realised a lifelong dream. Last night, big night, big night, um, amazing. One of the happiest moments of, of my life, actually, of my life, because I, my family was so happy. My husband was in tears, my mother, my brothers, my nephew. Um, who were there, who were there in the, in the stadium. And I, I kind of sensed that I made a lot of people happy, so that made me feel really good. <laughs> it had always been a goal for Kathy Freeman to run in an Olympic Games, and in 1996 she realised that dream, becoming the first Aboriginal athlete to represent Australia. At the Atlanta Games, she became the sixth fastest woman ever over 400 metres, running a Commonwealth record and winning the silver medal behind Mari Jose Perec in arguably the greatest one lap race of all time. But it was many years ago when Kathy first discovered her love of running, competing in her first race at the tender age of six. In her youth, she would run 12 laps barefoot around a grassy track on a regular basis. Her mother would encourage her to write out, I am the world's greatest athlete, an affirmation which was to ring true some years later. When she was 13, she told her school guidance counsellor that her vocational plan was to win Olympic gold, a plan that was to see fruition down the track. When Cathy turned 16, she was selected to run at the Commonwealth Games, winning a gold medal as part of the 4x100 metre relay team. That win only fueled the desire to strive harder towards the ultimate goal, the elusive gold medal in an Olympic Games. When the 2000 Sydney Olympic Games finally came around, Cathy was ready to realise that goal. At the opening ceremony, Cathy was the star attraction, lighting the flame in spectacular circumstances. And what followed was everything she had ever dreamed of. With over 100,000 people chanting her name and running in a specially designed one-piece suit, Kathy flew home to win gold in the 400 metres final. The most famous Indigenous face in Australia and well-loved on and off the track, Kathy made the Sydney Olympics her own. Kathy also shined outside of athletics, receiving an honorary doctorate from the University of Ballarat. Kathy, draped in academic garb, looked a bit uncomfortable away from her familiar surroundings, but was proud of her success. She was presented with a doctorate from the university during the ceremony, with officials praising Kathy's determination and willingness to tackle challenges and her remarkable achievements. Kathy has given plenty back to the community, especially programs involving Indigenous children. Along with other sporting stars like Australian swimmer Dawn Fraser and former US Olympic hurdles champion Ed Moses, Kathy has given the children a goal in life. She knew that if the programs had been around when she was younger, it would have helped to define her direction in life earlier and her vision would have been so much clearer. Kathy, who was extremely proud of her heritage, ran her victory lap at the Commonwealth Games with the Aboriginal flag before taking the Australian flag as well. Even though it ignited much discussion, she raised awareness regarding Aboriginal and race relations. And it was those actions that made Cathy a role model for young and old, having been awarded the title of Young Australian of the Year and the following year Aboriginal Athlete of the Year. It had been many years since Australia had their very own track star and after Sydney they had found their new hero in Cathy Freeman. A down-to-earth person and a fierce competitor, Cathy has been a genuine star.